Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this tutorial I'm going to show how to use Git in sort of a workflow mirroring what would happen with two developers using a remote server. So what I've got to start with is, I'll show you in the web page, I've got a sales tool repository on GitHub, and I've got this project in it. Now I've got that into a Eclipse environment shown here. We can see here I've got the project checked out, and I can see in my Git repositories view that it's got this remote origin, so this is the one it's linked to, and it's linked to that exact repository on GitHub. I've got a master that's local, and that's linked to a tracking branch, the origin slash master on the server. Now I have the identical setup in a second Eclipse workspace. So this is a second copy. You can imagine this, I've changed the background here to be orange just to keep the two straight. We can imagine that the orange side happens to be another developer on a completely different uh, PC. It's the same setup. I've got the uh, project checked out, and I've got the identical configuration here for um, working with the remote server on origin, the same thing set up. So both are up to date. We can tell they're both up to date. Um, if I go back to the website, I can see here that the uh, most recent patch coming in uh, was the one for the cleanup code, it was called. And if I look at each of these, eh, cleaned up code, cleaned up code, and so forth. Cleaned up code and cleaned up code. So everything's up to date. With Git, it's quite easy actually to get out of sync, and we'll see how that happens today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create changes on each of these. We're going to simulate two developers both working on different things. So what we're going to do is we're going to first create a branch. We want to do all of our work in a branch. So the best way to do that is if you right click on the remote uh, master, and I'm going to uh, create branch. A previous demo I had shown um, right clicking on the local. I've since learned it's probably better to click on the remote. And we can give it a name, so whatever the change happens to be. So I'm going to change some default values, so I'm going to call this change defaults. We want to select merge, so if we pull from the remote master, it's going to merge the changes in. Uh, rebasing does a similar idea, but uh, it just changes the way the version numbers go, and none would not do anything for us. So merge is probably a good bet. So now I've got my master branch. We can see here it's checked out, meaning we got the check on it. Again, I can double click on it, this switches me to master. Double click, I'm now checking out the change defaults. So let's actually go through and change the defaults. So these are the default values here in my project that I was going to change. Uh, 0, 4, and let's add just another one. Uh, 84, and why not at the very beginning, let's add negative 1. So change those values here. And maybe at the same time we realize, well, always want to refactor the code. Looking through this code, using this for loop is a little bit bit long, let's refactor that into a for each loop. So I can say for int i in data, print that out. Okay, so now I've got my for each loop. And maybe we change the indentation here just to uh, make a few more changes. This is kind of necessary because we're going to add a conflict later. Now. What I would normally do is I would check this in, so I'm going to go ahead and commit, commit this, and I'm going to say, I'll put in a thing here, you know, change default values and refactor for loop. Now when I commit, it only commits it to this local branch. As shown here, the number has now changed on my, the hash code for the check-in has changed. The other two are staying the same. Now, Git's working offline. Unless you explicitly tell it you want to push or pull, everything is done on your local machine. You could cut your Ethernet cable, and Git wouldn't care. So at the moment, that was just done locally. Now, we'll simulate that at the same time, the other developer, we'll maybe call him Mr. Orange, is doing something else. So we're going to go to the same file, so that was in sales data. And here we have the same file. Now, of course, it's got the old uh, data here. So we want to do a change. Well, I'm going to do the same process. Right-click on the origin slash master, and I'm going to create a branch. I'm going to name this what I, basically what's going to do here. I'm going to sum up the values. So let's call it sum values. Now, this is just a local name. It just has to mean something to the developer on the developer's machine. We won't keep these around forever, so that's fine. Sum values, and we can see here all of the values are the same on the hash codes because we haven't done any changes yet. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to also print out the sum. Or to print to sum them here, I guess sum plus equal the i, and then system.out sum is, and we'll print out the i here. Of course, I need to declare what i int sum equals 0, and down here it says should be sum. So I made a quick change here, and let's say at the same time we realized we needed to also add a comment for our class. So put that up here at the top. We want to put in a uh, class level comment, and we'll say represent the sales data for a given period. Of course, this class is terribly incomplete at the moment, uh, but at least it gives us something to work on. So now what do I need to do? Well, I've got it checked out. I've made a change. I need to check in the change. It's going to check in the change onto this sum values branch. Again, I always want to work on a branch just to keep things uh, separate for me. Now, it happens to have defaulted to my name and the email address I gave it. Um, let's put in here, uh, I have the junk coder. That's the one I wanted to use. So I'm just going to put this in just so that we uh, when we look at the, tr the commit logs, we can see who did what. Basically, there'll be a other developer and a me. What would I do? Well, I uh, summed up values when displaying and added class comment. Now, this commit only went here to my local branch. It didn't even make it to the master, and it hasn't gone to the remote. Now. You'll note that each of my masters here on the left is still FCD, here on the right is FCD. So nothing has yet gone to the master in each case. And if I were to look at the web page, it would still be unchanged. So let's imagine that Mr. Orange happens to commit first. So how does he do that? He goes to this master branch, his local master. He right clicks on the uh, branch that he's interested in merging in, and he's going to merge that back into the main. Now. One interesting thing to note here, you know, it's listing where it came from, the new patch, the new um, commit that we're merging to. This would be a snapshot. And it says up here, result is fast forward. Now, fast forward is interesting. Fast forward means it was able to do the merge with absolutely no work. Well, what's that mean? Well, if you think about the versions, let me just create a new file here. Eh, text file, sure. Maybe we've got like version 1, and then we did some change, and we created version 2 of a file. And we created another version 3, maybe. At some points, we may have some branches coming off of, like, say, version 1 and so forth, but we might have been at version 2 here. We made a single change and got to version 3. So there's no changes that were uh, otherwise present in the file that we're trying to merge from. In other words, the origin was at the previous or an apparent uh, version of the one that we're trying to merge in. So no real work had to be done. Uh, Git could simply just sort of walk down the version line and say, well, I will now take yours as exactly the new master, the new version, the new head. No work needed to be done. So say, OK, that was a fast forward. It did that very easily. Now, we haven't done anything to the master yet on the origin. We just changed our local master. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to push. So push changes upstream is easy, upstream being to the remote, i.e. origin. And we'll do the push, and this should come back saying also fast forward. So the result here, uh, we pushed to sales tool origin, and uh, summed up the values, that's what happened. Now it turns out push only works when you can do this fast forward. It only works when it's sort of the, the one obvious thing to happen. Now let's imagine that our other developer, get rid of that little bit, wants to now commit the change, push the change up to the master. So on the local copy, do the same thing. We switch over to master, the local master. I right click on the branch to bring in, and I'm going to merge it in. And again, this is a fast forward merge because no changes have been seen locally to anything else. There's no, no conflicts possible locally. Again, now there's a problem remotely, but note that we haven't updated here. We're still back at FCD. That's what we were looking at before. 
We haven't seen the changes remotely yet because we haven't done an update. Git hasn't contacted the server, it only does so when you tell it to. So now I've changed my local master, that's great. We can try and push it. Of course, this isn't going to work. We've got some sort of conflict. Somebody else has done a change first. So we said here, and you've got to kind of read these, otherwise you only get a little tiny icon. It's not very clear what's going on. We got a problem on the master. It was rejected. It was a non-fast forward push. Push has to be fast forward, i.e. no merging required. It happens to be just the next version up. Okay, so now we know that we had a problem. So what do I do? Well, I need to bring in the changes from the server. So I can do this in a couple steps. I'm going to just demonstrate it one step at a time. Fetch changes from upstream is effectively going to now tell Git, please talk to the, re the remote, my origin, and see what happened. And we'll note here that this fcd such and such will update when I do a fetch. Now it talks to the server. That's the only time it's talking to the server. That's why everything is so fast otherwise. And says, oh, hey, I found something new. It pulls down the change. So the other developer had made a change. So if I click on this, in the history here on the right, we can see that, well, we had this cleaned up code that we started with. Now we've gone up and there's this new change from the other developer that's come in. If I go back to my local, we can see that uh, the origin slash master is here up at this latest revision. And yet we're back here. My master, this green one, we're sitting back at this one revision behind, and it happens to be up to date with my change default. And this is the hash code, the ID. So what do I need to do? Well, I need to pull in the changes that were made. So I'm clicking on my master here, and I can say, I want to pull changes from upstream into current branch. So I'll pull it down, and we can see what happened. It says, uh, no ref to fetch from origin, everything is up to date. It pulled it in and it tells us the result, conflicting. So what's going on is, well, the fetch was simply talking to the remote server. Nothing needed to happen that way. And the update was pulling the data into the current branch. Well, we're conflicted. We've got some sort of problem. We can tell it's conflicted, not only from that error message, but also as we go back here and we look here on the left. We see these uh, two-way arrows. That means that we've got some sort of conflict in the tree, and that comes down to here's the conflict. We can look at our file, and we note that it's done some fairly weird stuff to our file. Git has put in these annotations to demonstrate where we had some conflicts. And finally, now we're going to use this git staging. So if you go to the git staging, which you might have gone and uh, revealed through uh, window, show view, other, under git, it was the git staging view. So we can see here all the files that are in conflict. These are unstaged files. The best way to found a merge is you can right click and then go to the merge tool. Now we've got two ways of doing it, two ways of the tool showing us what's going on. In the first way, Git's going to have basically done most of the work for us, except then we're going to have to fill in the few br blanks. Let's try that to begin with. So we can see up here that git has taken the changes from one and just slipped that in. And if I scroll up, we can see here we've got the changes here as well. That's fine. And then down here we've got some conflicts. It doesn't know what should be where because, well, we effectively kind of took one line and moved things around. So what I want to do now, my whole purpose in merging, is I'm going to get this file on the left to be the way I want it. So I can see, well, what did the other person do? Well. They set up this sum, and we need to now bring that into what we've done here. So I need to keep the sum coming in, so that's this whole sum. I'll get rid of this. Summing is good. Printing out is fine. And they left, they had this old for loop. Well, I don't care about that old for loop anymore. I want to use my new for loop. So I want it to look something like that. I want to initialize the value. I want to go through the for each loop and then print it out and add the sum. So that kind of takes in both the changes. I had to do a bit of work here because we had the conflicting changes. I'm going to save the file that writes those changes to disk and I can close this. Now it's still showing as conflicted. Git doesn't know that we've solved the problem. Now there's a few ways we could do this. First way is I could right click on it and go down to team and then 
under team you could click add to index or from the menu here I can go add to index that will show that it's been resolved. I personally like the way up here in the staging view just dragging it down to staged. Staged means that it's going to be involved in the next commit and here we have it the commits all ready to go it's the merging commit. It's got the information in there it already puts in the comment looks good to me I'll commit this. Now this is being committed back to my master. We went from 394 um uh, yep we went from th yeah 31 so that gives us the new commit if I go back to the history view here, it shows me my trees kind of converge. So I had my, my origin is sitting here. My change default branch is sitting here. So these are the two different branches I had been working on. And the two are merged together into this uh, new check-in, this new snapshot by my merge operation. So now I've got that done, I need to actually push it back to the server. So you can say push, it's going to push to the remote repository, and because we've done all the work of, brand, of merging it together, it's a fast forward change, meaning it can simply walk ahead and accept the changes. So that's now been pushed up to the server, and here we've got that. Now what's the other developers see? They don't realize yet that we've done all this work. They could go through the same process that we had just gone through. Well. A thing that we often will do is you'll often want to update from the server. So fetch changes, so fetch, and then you'll actually see what the remote system's like. Here we see that it's pulling down some new changes, some new branches, and we can now tell that we're out of date. So what we can do is we can into our master, I can pull in the changes. So pull it in, and this should just simply be a fast forward change. Yep, fast forward, no changes were made on my side. So that walks ahead, and if I wanted to, I could update my local copy here, my branch. If there was more work to be done on this branch, I could do the same thing. I could pull down the changes, nope, and it's already up to date. Um, no, it's not. Anyway, we could merge in the changes into that. Now, in this case, I'm perhaps done that piece of work. I don't need this branch anymore. I can simply delete the branch. That does not change my history. So I still have these branches that I'm merging back in. I simply removed the effect, if you will, a pointer into which of these uh, was I working with. So I'm now no longer to have a pointer here, but I can recover it. It's all in the history. Likewise, if I go back to the first developer, we see here that we've got this change defaults is currently pointed here. I could try and update it and so forth. I'm just going to say, well, I don't really need it anymore. I'll create a new branch if I'm doing a new feature. So I'll delete that branch. And so now I've shown how the two developers can work together. Normally, hopefully, you won't have to be doing much merging if the, conf if the changes are non-conflicting um, and you keep up to date quite regularly. A probably a good plan is to fairly frequently update your copy of the repository. So go into the master and then pull down the changes uh, from the server and that'll pull in everything in case somebody has made a change in the background that you weren't aware of. Check the comments below in this YouTube video. There's a link to the different uh, Git tutorials, as well as um, some links to some other resources that may be useful. Thank you for watching.